Rashid, I want to start with you and just the growth of the, 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 the this jazz festival and how it's grown from inception. What have you seen in terms of changing trends, perhaps, from when you started to where the festival is now? Well, you know, when we started in 2000 um, at the Good Hope Center, we quickly ran a capacity of 7,000 people. And that's when we had to make the decision about switching venues. And by then, the new convention center was just completed. Um, but in terms of trends, we, it was very interesting then that you know, up to 60% of people were coming out of Cape Town. And I think you know, from the Eastern Cape, Gauteng, KZN. But more interesting, it, people started coming from, uh, um, from SADC countries, from Mozambique, Botswana, Namibia, Angola. Um, that was an interesting trend early in the uh, early in the, the 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 days, and and you know Cape Townians came a bit later, and that's why they're always losing out and getting tickets. But that was the trend, and that forced us to obviously move. But it was also interesting then to say, you know, how does music, in particular as a festival, form part of cultural tourism, and the returns on the economic returns and, and impact on on the host city. So that's been interesting and, and I think it's going to create a new mindset amongst uh, some of the parastatals. Ian, I want to come to you and just w what your attraction to this festival has been and, and you're getting involved in it. Well, it's of course, uh, it's always a great uh, honour and a great excitement to be involved in the festival. In fact, we go back quite a long way, I think, when it was still the North Sea Fest Jazz Festival, which says, how many years back was that, uh, Rashid? 2001, you performed. 2001, we performed with the band Virtual Jazz Reality. And uh, so it's, it's really phenomenal to be part of the festival and also just that communication and, 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 and all the networking you can do with, of course, all your international counterparts. It's, it's really... Um, a wonderful opportunity for any musician, whether it be South African or, or from abroad and so on. So in that respect, it's, it's, it's tremendous. Rashid, when I came, when I came to, the, to the Jazz Festival, and this was years ago, I was still a student at the time, and I remember coming to the festival, and I, I'd come on a writing course, actually, first time that I was coming on, a, on, a, on, on this kind of a program particularly, and it was very interesting because for me, it was being introduced to jazz music as a journalist. Do you still have these kind of workshops on the sidelines where you're introducing people that, are, that might not be jazz fans and telling them what it's about? Because I remember on our course, it was really about where it comes from and getting that excitement do you still have those kind of things happening on the sideline of the festival? Yes, I think, well, you must have been uh, one of the first students when we really started with Gwen Ansel. And uh, we, we actually, in our 10th anniversary this year, and um, it's about the drum beat. And, 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 and it is about how we get journalists to, to, to write respectfully or with a good eye and ear about the arts, in particular music, and be able to interact with musicians or with us as, as organizers. So I think it's a very important course, and we've added another level now. It's trained the train of the mentorship program, so we could spread this word this word further in, 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 in Africa. Uh, Ian, I want to come to you just on, on the, the lucrativeness of this industry. And I'm talking about South Africa here. And, you were, and Rashid was talking on earlier on and on how South Africa is getting you know, people from other African countries as well, not just from overseas, because I do know that you do have quite a strong um, overseas contingent that comes to South Africa for this festival. But just how lucrative the jazz industry in South Africa is. Can you talk to that? Well, let's be perfectly honest about it. And, you know, jazz is still a struggling art form. And I think you, that would be, um, you know, agreed upon by most musicians. And apart from the, a chosen few who managed to make a, a reasonable or reasonably good living out of jazz. So you can imagine that th these festivals do such a lot in terms of really getting the word of jazz out. Because like classical music, it's still an art form and, and it still has a relatively small audience. So I think, as Rashid mentioned, the fact that it brings in uh, the man on the street because of the excitement of the event and so on and uh, the way it's, it has grown over the years. So from my point of view, it's really a wonderful opportunity to spread the gospel of jazz. But and. Uh, from a business perspective, yes, a lot needs to be done in terms of really uh, promoting the art form and so on and bringing it to a wider audience because I do believe that it, it, it is 
it, you know, jazz is an actually in, an intellectual process, it, and it's uh, like anything, it's an acquired taste, and the more people are exposed to it, like on these incredible festivals, the, the better it is for us, because we, there is still such a shortage of venues in this country, uh, jazz venues, and it's a, it's a, syn uh, a syndrome which is present throughout the world and so on. So in that respect, uh, you know, it's still a struggling art form. So from a business point of view, it is not lucrative, but there's certainly the festivals uh, create such an awareness and does give us an opportunity to play on, on a major stage in which in those instances, it does help us tremendously and, and the musicians in terms of getting the word out because we have relatively few uh, jazz stations in this country and uh, those things need to be addressed. But I cannot speak, uh, I can't, uh, you know, strongly enough about just what, uh, how important the festival is and how it brings the word of jazz to such a, a new audience and a young audience and keeps, keeps the, the art form alive. So we're really indebted to Rashid and, and Billy and for all the fine work they do. Rashid, I want to ask you a little bit about, about some, of the, some of the artists that you have coming through. I mean, you've got somebody like Lauren Hill who, I mean, just listening to her music, I'm a fan of hers. And her, her music isn't traditional jazz music. Do you have, having artists like that coming to the festival also, you know, attract a, a different kind of, a different kind of um, a fan that might find out, well, you know, I like Lauren Hill, going to see her. But when they come to the festival, actually find that they really enjoy really what you could call pure jazz? Mm -hmm. Ben, you know, it worked since day one. We always spoke about jazz and jazz-related music because a lot of the art form comes out of jazz. And we, early days, we spoke about the blues, we spoke about, about uh, um, fusion. And music has evolved in, in such a short space of time. You know, when fusion came in with uh, um, with Miles Davis and, and Wayne Shaw to them, everyone said, wow, what's that? You know, they were critical, but it's moved. And if you look at how young people are using uh, um, sort of the classics and remixing it, and I think it's important you have that mix. But as a festival that needs to be economically viable, and you can compare to, to New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, the Montreux, uh, uh, um, um, Montreal, in in Canada, Canada, they do cater for much broader audience, and I think that that works. So you get people with different tastes. People like Lauren Hill, but he said, "Hey, my dad spoke about Ron Carter. Let me check that out." And so dad also goes to go listen, and and we heard this a lot from people, you know, saying, "Wow, you know, the, when we brought Quito on, I think Quito is an important music genre that 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 we have to respect." That started in in South Africa. We thought of bringing her in. You know, I saw the first reggae act at a jazz festival at Montreal, at Montreux in Switzerland, Claude Nobbs. And I asked Claude Nobbs, where are you going to now? This is now really breaking the rules. And he said, fresh it, people love it, I love it. And, you know, 13 years later, the, I've got uh, Third World, who was great friends of, of, of the late Lucky Dubé. But you have to just move on. You know, you, I was criticized about it and questioned, but I think if you explain it, the rationale, people that accept at the end of the day is that, you know, you are catering for that broad audience. And so we also demystifying this word jazz. Ian, uh, I wonder... Miles Davis, you know, out of him came Run DMC. Miles Davis recorded two rock albums in Japan, so why can't we experiment? Ian, I want to come to you for this, for this last question and very quickly if you could just tell us because I mean you were talking about the business of music and at the end of the day uh, for, for any artist that is doing this, as much as they would love this and would probably do it if they didn't get paid, they do need to get paid to make that living and you'll find that a lot of artists for sometimes it's difficult for them to market themselves because they want to concentrate on their music or they just don't know how the music industry works. In terms of being able to help artists to also be business people and see their, their art as a business as well. Um, what strides are we making in this country to be able to achieve that? I think a lot needs to be done in that respect and I think that's one of the major problems and even I suffer with that syndrome myself. I, I, in all humility, I must say that I've actually got a tremendous product and I haven't remotely begun for many reasons. I'm extremely busy with outreach programs and, and, and music education and so on. So I haven't really had the time to market even my own product and that's a marvelous product. I mean, we, we've performed in... A, uh, in Dubai, we've been to New Orleans and we've, and we've had tremendous response and, and uh, in, in uh, overseas and so on. And uh, quite often we struggle even in our own country. But 
If you look at overseas, even the, the universities and the college education, uh, they actually cater for that. You can get a degree in, in music management or they, part of your, your, your musical degree will focus on, on, on music management and so on. So that is still so sorely lacking here and a tremendous amount needs to be done in that respect. And I think some of the programs that, that, that some of the workshops have been put in place, Rashid, you have tackled some of those issues there, but still a tremendous amount needs to be done. And also I think a problem in this, particularly in Cape Town, I think in Johannesburg things are a bit better that uh, there is more music management there. We, we suffer here, particularly in Cape Town, you find that there's no music management uh, or, or people or agents. Uh, an agent's not someone who just should pick up the phone and say I've got a gig. An agent is someone who goes out and, and makes sure that, um, I'll give an example, um, uh, the, the, the blues guitar player, the most famous one, um, what's his name now, goodness gracious. Anyway, one of the top guitar players, he, he was struggling along, the name will come to me now, and uh, he changed his management and within a month or so he was working literally 364 gigs a day, you know, so it's all about the, the correct uh, management and agency and so on and, and really getting a good source of, a good business sense or someone who has that acumen behind you. Ian, I'm just going to take a guess here. Was it George Benson at all that you were talking about, not? No, it's not George. It's one I of the uh, early blues. There. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. so okay, we've got to wrap up. As there. you get older, this. I was going to say Buddy Miles. Not uh, <laughs> well, 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 thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. That was Rashid Lombard, the festival director, and Ian Smith from the Virtual Jazz Reality Band. And they were just speaking to us about the Cape Town Jazz Festival.